For 2021, Boardman's full suspension all mountain bike with MTR has seen a pretty serious overhaul. It gets a stretched reach, slack and head angle, and 130mm suspension at the rear gets bumped up to 145mm suspension, and there's 150mm suspension at the front. And the bike now rolls on 29 inch wheels. What hasn't changed though is the four bar suspension from the platform and the excellent value for money. Hi, Liam from our TC here, and this is the full review of the Borman MTR 8.9. So, on test we've got the Boardman MTR in its 8.9 model and this one will set you back £1,750. Boardman says that this particular model balances a great performing spec with a great price. So let's start off with the kit that you get on this bike. The 150mm travel up front is sorted by a RockShox 35 Gold RL. And that's a solid fort as found on a lot of bikes in this price range, including the Rock Rider AM100S and the Trek Fuel EX7, and the latter is a full £600 more expensive than this bike. Then the rear suspension is handled by a RockShox Deluxe Select Plus, and the shifting comes from SRAM in the form of the NX Eagle Group Set. SRAM also has the braking covered with a pair of level T's, and Boardman's been extra nice to us and has kitted a four pot caliper at each end of the bike, and that makes a really noticeable difference when you're on the trail. Then the MTR 8.9 rolls on a pair of Boardman's own Boost 29er tubeless ready wheels. They're both wrapped with a classic combination of a Maxxis Minion DHF at the front and a DHR2 at the rear. Both of those get XO casings and 2.3 inch widths. While it would be nice to see faster tyres on this bike, these are still plenty grippy enough in most conditions. It's only in the proper wet stuff where you might want to change something around. But if I bought this bike myself, I wouldn't rush to change these tyres. If you go back to the wheels themselves, it's worth noting that the free hubs pickup is a little bit slow, but in the grand scheme of things, I didn't have an issue. Finally, the bike is graced with a fairly modern cockpit. We get a 780mm bar with a 45mm stem, and as for the dropper post, that's the Satori Serata Pro. On our large frame, we get 150mm travel, and that'd be the same on an extra large. However, on a small and medium, it'll get 125mm drop. For the most part, the contact points on this bike are rather good. We get a pair of lock-on grips that are also tapered and the saddle has actually fit me really, really well. Unfortunately, that's where the goodness stops and the drop post lever is destined for the bin. It follows an over the handlebar design from when two by drivetrains were commonplace. And when it's compared with the underbar remotes that we get on more modern bikes, it's not as easy to actuate and it's not as comfortable on the thumb. This one in particular is also really slippery, so it's begging for a bit of grip tape. The suspension is quite an interesting point on the MTR 8.9. Most of the time, the RockShox 35 Guard RL works reasonably well. It soaks up small bumps and offers a reasonable level of support. However, once you get charging into fast, repeated hits, it starts to feel really harsh. This harshness was somewhat remedied by winding off some rebound damping, but unfortunately, I never found a perfect balance between too harsh and too springy. Because of this, I felt myself really holding back in chunkier sections, just to stay composed. Thankfully, this fork does take bottomless tokens, so popping one or two in should help by making the fork more supple at the beginning of the stroke. Moving on to the rear suspension, it's a very different story. I started off with 30% sag as with any bike, but I found this one to be a little bit wallowy in the corners and it sucked energy when I was on the pedals. Then I bumped it up to 25% and everything changed. At a bit of an expense of small bump sensitivity, I was rewarded with a rear end that was definitely more playful and much more supportive but it still tracked the ground nicely and it dealt with big hits rather well. Pumping the rear into the back side of rollers rewards you with a welcome amount of free speed, and the rear end deals with repeated hits much better than the fork. It's also an impressively solid pedaling platform wasting very little energy to pedal bob. But of course, a bike is more than just its suspension, and fortunately for the MTR 8.9, the whole package rides rather well. The MTR gets a 75.5 degree seat tube angle, and that places right away at a very comfortable place over the pedals. And when that's paired with the bike's solid pedaling platform, it makes for a keen and comfortable climber that doesn't sap too much energy to pedal bob. 
Before I upped the size to 25%, the MTR was fairly reluctant to get up to speed. But the firmer shock fixed things to the point where it just wasn't as much of an issue at all. Granted, it's still not the sprightliest of bikes, but that's mostly down to its 15.8 kilos rather than a suspension platform. Once pointed downhill, the MTR has proven to be a very well balanced bike in terms of its geometry. It gets a 66 degree head tube angle, and that's by no means progressive by today's standard, but when that's paired with the 475mm reach, it makes for a confident ride that can tackle an awful lot. In fact, it's hard to complain about this bike's geometry. While it is a bit over suspended from Formello trails, it's still agile, well rounded, and great fun when they are sparse. But it is most at home on techie trails where the speeds ramp up until you find the limit of that fork. That reach offers a load of room to move around on the bike and places the front wheel at a decent distance in front of you. So when you do hit those steep trails, it doesn't feel as if your weight is pitched too far over the front end. And when paired with a 1,225mm wheelbase, you've got a super stable ride at speed. Thanks to the short 440mm chainstays, it's a really easy bike to flick around tight corners too. Plummeting down steep trails is where the four pocket calipers on those level T brakes really come into play. They offer plenty of power and a lot of modulation that lets you even creep down the steep trails if you feel you need to. But when things get really quick, it's really confidence inspiring knowing that you've got all that power at your fingertips, even with 180mm rotors at the front and back. However, quickly into my test period, my rear brake got really squishy and needed to bleed. And during that bleed, air wouldn't stop coming through, so clearly a seal within the brake had broken somewhere. I got in touch with Boardman and they sorted that out for me really quickly and they also assured me that if this were to happen to a customer bike it would be fixed free of charge under the warranty. So the Boardman MTR 8.9 has proven to be a solid bike both up and downhill but at £1,750 is it good value for money? The sub £2,000 price point is a fierce battleground for a range of mountain bikes and like many the Boardman MTR 8.9 falls foul to the Vitus Mathique. At £1,600, the Vitus Mythique gets a Mazoki Bomber Z2 fork, WTB i30 rims and a Brand X dropper post, but it doesn't get 4 pop brakes and it gets just 140mm suspension, rather than what we get on this bike. The geometry isn't too dissimilar either, but it gets a shorter reach and a longer chainstay. And then there's a the Rock Rider AM100S, and it gets much the same kit as we see on this bike, but a full £350 cheaper. However, the MTR earns its keep with a better geometry and much better sorted suspension kinematic. If you're looking for your first full suspension bike or you're just on a budget, it's really hard to go wrong with the Baldwin MTR 8.9. Its geometry is spot on for a range of riding and is really welcoming to newbies. For veterans, it's still ready and raring to be thrown down your favourite tracks. It's even got that kit to back up the excellent ride, however more aggressive riders may want to change the fork a bit further down the line. 